Welcome back to my channel. Um, this is a channel that looks at Pokemon cards, focusing on artwork usually. And today is no exception. We are going to be focusing on an artist, and we are looking at Aoki. And these are the first two cards that Aoki was commissioned to do. Uh, they are obviously a Frostmoth character rare with um, Melanie. And this is the Zacian V. And these both came out in VMAX Climax of December 21. And uh, we'll look at the Frostmoth first. Now, I don't know much, well, I don't know anything about Aoki. I don't know if they're male or female. I have a suspicion they are female, but I do not know for sure. But this is a very beautiful card. Christmas lights down the bottom. Very pretty, and equally pretty, is the Zacian V. Bit of texture on there. See? So those were the first two cards that came out. The next card that came out was this card, and this is one of my favourite ones. This is uh, Heracross. I was very impressed with this when it first came out. It was in Battle Region, February 22, and it came out in Astral Radiance in English. And I think it is just lovely. Slightly interesting thing I think here is that you've got these suggestions of fireflies almost, little tiny fireflies, which I mean, there is a Firefly Pokemon. There's Illumise, um, which I think is a Firefly Pokemon. But these aren't Illumise. So it's not often you get um, animals or, yeah, living creatures that aren't Pokemon that slip into Pokemon cards. There is, uh, there are a few, but they're very rare. Usually any supporting cast are real, actual Pokemon. Um, the next card that came out was this Regice, and Regice was in Space Jugger of April 22, uh, but it was also it also had a V-Star Universe print where it has a uh, reverse foil. Actually, we will look at that since it's the slightly different one. The reverse foils in this uh, set were mm, not very exciting. Um, I like the colours in this. It's a very difficult Pokemon to do anything very exciting with because it doesn't have a face. Um, and it's just a big block of ice. But I think that's actually quite a nicely done card. But it's like a lot of other Reggie Ice cards over the years. Um, yeah, there's nothing amazingly spectacular about it, but it's a very nice card. So that was the Reggie Ice. Now the next one is Honchcrow, which came out in Dark Phantasma of May 22. And it's the sort of card that you might just pass over but actually looking at the detail of it the cityscape in the background by night it's really very well done with the moon and a rather menacing look from Honchkrow there so I do actually quite like that card a lot but it's one that I when I first saw it I think I probably overlooked it um, didn't realize how well put together it is but it is a very nice card the next card that came out was the Lantern from Lost Abyss. I do love Lantern very much. I'm, I've got a collection of Lantern that I will be doing a video on soon. And this is a very interesting Lantern card. With um, I mean, Lantern is often about how um, the light works in it and how the light on Lantern is working in relation to the rest of the card. Um, and this is a very different card. A lot of Lanterns are moderately similar in how the uh, the artist has approached the project but this is, has some thought in it and I think that's rather nice. So that is Lantern and as I say it came from Lost Abyss in July of 22. The next card up was in September of 22 from Incandescent Arcana and this is the Salazzle. It's a Pokemon I don't particularly like very much. Um, this card no, I don't think I like it particularly. It's very fluid. Um, but it doesn't really doesn't really do anything for me. But it's competent. 
but um, no, that one, that one perhaps not so exciting. Now, the next card up I've got is the Neuvern. Am I missing one? No, I don't think so. Uh, there's Paradigm Trigger in October of 22. Um, and I, I think that's a bit boring. I mean, this is a very repetitive background. You get in so many Pokemon cards, so a bit of random Rocky Canyon and uh, Sky. Um, it's okay. If you actually look at the Neuvern, it's been painted very well. But it's not an exciting card, and it's not a memorable card, I'm afraid. Um, I should point out that, I, that there was a card that I have not shown you, because I haven't got it, which is the Mallow and Lana SP promo card from Extra Battle Day in February of 22. It's a Japan-only alternate art um, promo, um, and it's quite expensive, and I haven't actually found a copy that I fancy paying the price for, so... Speaking of Japanese exclusives, um, this is the Galarian Meowth, which was from October of 22, and is just a gym promo. Never came out in English. Um, absolutely lovely lighting in this one, and very, very nice card. Um, and it's got that extra specialness from being a J Japanese exclusive. Yep, I, I, I rate that card very highly. Uh, the concept's nice, and the execution's nice, so... Pretty card. Going from Japanese exclusive to English exclusive, the only English card I'm going to be showing you today is the Rapidash from the Silver Tempest pre-release kit. And this was November of 22. And I don't like this card. Um, very few people have done Rapidash well. It's a Pokemon that mm, the majority of artists completely fail at. I think horses are very, very tough to uh, draw competently to really get a sense of the flow of the musculature of a horse um, a lot of the times they look rather clunky static and they fall back on the fiery mane is a very difficult thing to really represent well in artwork of course Arita did it very well in jungle and there's been um, a few since there's a, a lovely one in delta species um, so there are there are good cards out there of Rapidash, but this falls into the majority of Rapidash cards of being a bit of a disappointment. Still, the background is very competently done. Um, I just don't particularly like it as a card, and I'd rather there was a Japanese print of it anyway. <laughs> so uh, the next card is Zera Aura V Max, and this came out in V Star Universe of so December twenty two, and is a very interesting card, very memorable card. Um, the little Pachirisu asleep there, and we've got the Togi D down there, and the Emolga. And the foiling on this is beautifully done with the lightning coming off the electric Pokemon. Um, yeah, very nice card. And as I say, very memorable card. Uh, the next card up is probably my favourite, I think. Um, I am a little biased because I'm a big Tropius fan. Um, but this was it's quite hard to find in Japanese because it was in the Sprigatito Lucario EX start deck of January 23. Uh, and isn't in a main set over in Japan. In English it's very easy to find because it's in the Scarlet and Violet base set. Um, but I think the lighting on this is just stunning. The dappled light uh, falling down through the forest canopy. And the background is great with the milky background of distance. But it's all about the lighting of this card and the pose. The pose is really good. Um, yeah, like this card very, very much. I think it's my favourite you're going to see today. But there are there are some that come close. But yeah, that one that one is special to me. The next card is Zangoose, which came out in the Scarlet the Scarlet EX, the, the first set for Japan, or part of the first two sets, uh, January 23. Um, I do love Zangus. I'm collecting Zangus, sort of. Well, no, I am collecting Zangus. It's just a slow process. Um, I don't particularly like this card, and I, I, I was looking at it earlier and thinking, why do I not like it? And I think it's that the, the um, Lightning Bolt M or whatever that goes across Zangus's chest doesn't curve with the shape of its belly. 
um, it looks flat to it and doesn't quite work. I also feel it the eye is a bit too large. Uh, I know there's sort of forced perspective going on there, but um, it's not bad. It's just not quite right for me. Now, this is a very interesting one, and this also could be my favourite, but no, it's going to be the Tropius. But this this is a close one, and uh, this looks like a frontispiece from a, a, an il a book, illustration. It's done in a sort of Art Nouveau style, very different, very different, very, yeah, an Art, nu an Art Nouveau graphic style. And it's obviously Miss Magus, and it came out in Triplet Beat of March of 23, and uh, it's just stunning, beautiful, beautiful card. Really, really a highlight of that set. Um, it came out in Paldea Evolved in English, but the English print just doesn't have the same character quality um, as the Japanese print. Cards always look better in Japanese, especially when the aesthetic of the artist is is a Japanese aesthetic. It just it just feels right in Japanese. So that's a beautiful card. The next card is Luxray from Clayburst of April 23, and they've really done the hollow on this, or, yeah, I, I guess the artist is told ahead of time that, they're going, that the card will be hollow, but it, it, it is really, really very good hollow foil, that, uh, to create high drama with the purples and the electricity. There are a lot of very good Luxray cards. Luxray is a very dynamic Pokemon to uh, do good action shots. You know, this, this lower camera angle helps create great drama with the, the legs spread um, and the determined look in his face. Yep, very, very well done card, as so many Luxray cards are. Now, the next two are Seal and Dugong from 151, June of 23. Um, they're a candidate for most boring Pokemon in Gen 1. Um, Aoki was given the task of trying to do something with them, and I think they've done something with them. Um, they, they, they're kind of forgettable cards, but actually, if you look at them, it's very well painted, and it's it's got a little bit of a... Yeah, I, I like the seal especially. I think the Dugong, which is sort of in the curl of a wave here, um, the, I don't feel the water is particularly well done. It's a nice attempt, doesn't quite work for me, but the the seal is cute. If you if you can find seal cute, I mean, it really is one of the weakest of Pokemon. I mean, even even its name is a really it says everything about it that they couldn't be bothered. Um, but yeah, that's seal and Yugong from one five one. Coming towards the end now, and we've got Hone Edge from Raging Surf of September 23, and this is stunning. I mean, no, still going to be Tropius, but this is a very good painting. The depth of field um, is brilliant. The lighting, um, in the colours in the sky, the milkiness of the background, but also the uh, the illustration of Hone Edge is very, very good. The light, how it breaks on the sash. It's just very competent painting. Um, and the concept and construction of it is very, very good. Um, so, yep, that is a top tier card. We've got two more to look at and then we're we're through. So the next one is another Japanese exclusive and is Yamask from Jim Promos of October of 23. And again, very, very competent painting. And the light, it's very subtle actually, the light, but it's really very well done. Yamask is an, a peculiar creature and, and the focus always, because of the mask down here, pulls away from the fact that its face is up here. But um, that is a, yeah. That's as good a, a Yamas card as you're ever going to get. Um, that background is wonderful. The uh, desaturation and the mistiness of the background is, is incredible. So, yeah, very, very good. And the final card. Hmm. The final card is Elekid from Future Flash of October 23. Uh, it's a little bit strange that there haven't been any cards since this. Um, 
And there's nothing I don't think in the coming sets. I don't know if they've stopped or having a break from illustrating for Pokemon. Um, but this was the last one so far. As I say, Future Flash, October 23, came out in Paradox Rift in English at the end of last year. Um, competent painting. Um, it's not a very exciting pose or anything, but there we are. That is what it is. So there are the cards of Aoki. I hope someone found this interesting. Who knows?